All right then, so I just want to go through some of the benefits that I think CSS variables have over SAS variables and less variables. Now, the first most obvious one to me is that SAS and less both have to be transpiled into CSS for it to work. CSS doesn't have to be transpiled into CSS. That doesn't make sense. So that's one less thing to do for a start. Now, because SAS and less both have to be transpiled into CSS for the browser to understand it, that brings forward another advantage that CSS has over these two technologies. And that is that we can edit the variables directly inside the browser. So a lot of the time when I'm working on a website, what I like to do is create some kind of base layout for the website and then edit the CSS inside the browser. And I do that through the dev tools. So you can open those up in Chrome using F12 or right click and then go into inspect. And that's gonna bring up the dev tools where we see all the different elements here. And I can go into the sources panel to see my styles right here. So we can see both of these variables declared right here. Now. If we were using SAS or less, then that would have been transpiled into regular CSS, which the browser understands, and we wouldn't actually see the SAS and the less variables here. They'd all just be applied to the different elements. So in CSS, we can see our CSS custom properties or variables right here, and we can change them on the fly inside this console right here. So if I'm editing the website through this uh, console, the developer tools, which I like to do, then I can change the variables easily inside it. Okay, I can do that very, very easily. Now, SAS and LESS don't allow you to do that. They don't allow you to change the variables because it needs to be transpiled. So if we were to change the variables in SAS and LESS inside the browser, then that wouldn't reflect over here. It wouldn't change the properties that use those variables. I hope that makes sense. To find out more about SAS, by the way, I do have a whole series on that on this channel. I'll leave the link down below. So anyway, that's another benefit that CSS variables have over SAS and less variables. Okay, so what else can they do? Well, the next thing they can do is they can be used inside media queries. So we can't do this with less or SAS. We can't use different variables inside media queries and override them. For example, if we had in SAS a variable like this theme color we can't say well okay if we make a media query here if we say something like at media screen and max width and it's going to be 760 pixels we can't say in sas or less that inside this media query we want to override those variables but we can do that inside css variables so to go through this example what i'd like to do is focus on these things down here. So these three little blurbs, they are controlled via CSS grid at the minute, okay? So we have this grid template columns, which is laying them out in three columns like so, and each column takes up one fraction of the width, which is why they're all equal length. Now, for example, if I wanna store this in a variable, I would cut it from here. I'm gonna reference the variable here. So double dash and we'll call it something like layout and save that. Now we need to make that variable at the top. So if we go here and say double dash layout and set that equal to this thing, one FR, one FR, one FR and save it, then if we refresh, then nothing should happen at the minute. It's still using that layout, but it's also using that layout on smaller screens. So if we go down to something which is less, than 760 pixels, it's still using that layout. Now, if I want to override this layout variable inside a media query, which is saying the max width should be 760 pixels, so for screens less than this, if I want to override it, I can do using CSS variables, something that would be hard to do using less. So again, this has to be declared inside a selector. We can't just put the layout here and expect it to work. We have to use a selector. So I'll use the root selector again open it up and inside we'll place this layout variable like so. So now what we're saying is when the screen reaches 760 pixels or less in width, then I want to override the layout variable. And instead of being one FR, one FR, one FR, it's just going to be one FR, one fraction each. So they should all stack on top of each other. 
and you can learn more about CSS Grid on my YouTube channel as well. I've got a whole series for that. So if we refresh, then for large screens, we see no difference because the variable is still this thing right here. But as we go down into smaller screens, we can see when it reaches 760 pixels, it changes that variable and the layout becomes this right here. So each element now is one fraction of the whole width. It takes up the whole width. So that's a really cool thing about CSS variables. We can easily override them inside media queries, something that's a bit more difficult to do in SAS and less. Okay, so the last benefit I want to show you is that we can also scope CSS variables. We can override them in certain selectors. So for example, right here, we have the link color, which is this kind of yellow over here this yellowy brown in the nav and also down here in the content. Now, if we wanted to override that for a particular area of the website, for example, we don't want all links to be that color. For example, we could say inside the nav, we want to override that variable so it becomes black. We can do that. We could say below root that inside the nav, what we'd like to do is override this variable color. So I'm just gonna say nav and inside the hyphen hyphen link hyphen color is going to be instead equal to 0, 0, 0, which is black. Save that. Now inside the nav, that variable has been overwritten. So it uses the black color instead. But over here and anywhere else on your site that you use this variable, this link color variable, it's going to remain that brown yellow color. Okay. So this again would be really hard to do in SAS. We'd probably have to employ the use of mixins or something to do that. But in CSS variables, it is seriously simple to do. So for these reasons, I prefer to use CSS variables over SAS variables and less variables where possible.